Greetings, Parish Orphans and Retrogrades. Today, I bring you Monsignor Stephen Rossetti, a special guest, and he will be available for a short Q&A at the end of the session. He's published a fascinating new book late this summer called Diary of an American Exorcist, which is what he is. Uh, in addition, he is a research associate professor at the Catholic University of America. He's a licensed psychologist. He's president of the St. Michael Center for Spiritual Renewal. And he is my guest today here on Rules for Retrogrades. Monsignor, it's a great honor to have you. Tim, great to be with you. So, Diary of an American Exorcist, so many questions. Can you tell me, as a guy with all this fascinating experience that everyone out there, all the parish orphans and retrogrades want to hear, what made you think, was it one culminating event, uh, for example, to, to sit down and write the book on your experiences? Well, uh, I'm also an educator, as you mentioned, Tim, and I like to share experiences and knowledge and training. And uh, there's so little out there for training exorcists. There's, there are general books on the subject, but not the sort of day-to-day -day experience. What do exorcists need to know? You know, and, uh, and there's nothing out there. So this was a way for first to train exorcists and say, okay, here's what we're going through. And frankly, you're going to go through something similar. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I think it would be important. Most of us have experience, even, even the, the faithful Catholics out there with exorcism through the extent of maybe some of the movies that Hollywood has put out and they're not particularly studious depictions yeah. of what happened some of them more than others would you anytime i've ever spoken to in person or interviewed for a podcast an exorcist i am always feeling dogged by this like feeling that you know is it offensive when people want to ask you what they really want to ask you which is can you share with us some of the scarier events that that you've ever witnessed i mean tell us this can you share with us some of the scariest things recounted in your book here on rules for retrogrades well uh there's lots of interesting experiences uh i i don't like to sort of uh you know highlight those too much but a few would be I, one thing that people find interesting is getting texts from demons people don't believe that but occasionally we do get text messages uh, in the midst of a big case. Well, and it just makes sense. I mean, before the cell phones, the demons would turn TVs on and off. They would mess with the phone lines. They would, the lights on and off. They would do all, they would mess with sort of material things. Pictures would fly off walls, that sort of thing. Uh, but, and now they have cell phones, they're messing with cell phones. So we'll get these really snarky texts, you know, you're nothing, we're not leaving, you have no authority over us. And they just sort of diss you. And uh, what I do when I get a text from a demon is I just send them back a prayer. As a matter of, so they send me this nasty text message and I send back a prayer and they say, I got this one that said, no, Rosetti, you know, like lady, I was killing them. So every time they send me a text message, I send them back a wow. prayer. So frankly, they stop sending me text messages because they know what's going to happen. They're going to get a prayer, right? Smack in the face. But they are <laughs> still are, they're still sending prayer uh, texts to uh, team members and uh, others. So that's one sort of, uh, thing that people find hard to believe. Uh, I would say the biggest, the, the, if you all talk about scary things, uh, one of the ways we do discernment is when we just start praying over someone, if the demons come forward and they manifest and the person is possessed, uh, you see the, you've, you experience this very, very ugly, very dark, uh, very uh, violent, raging uh, personality. I mean, it, it's, it's not, uh, human beings can't really um, uh, mimic that. It's just the, the depth of the darkness and the evil and the rage is uh, quite uh, unsettling. Yeah, it's like subhuman or superhuman or preternatural. Yeah, if you don't believe in demons, you just sit there and, and face that at some point and you say, oh my gosh, this, whoa, this is, this is unbelievable. Yeah, and so when people, uh, we have people uh, come to us with put tattoos of demons on their shoulders and stuff. And they, they start, uh, they start uh, doing rituals to demons. They have no idea what they're getting into. They have no idea 
uh, what Satan and demons are capable of and, and, and would do. As a matter of fact, in the midst of one uh, session, I had this uh, nun who was helping us. And I said, I want you to know what you're dealing with. I said, and I look at the, the possessed person who was manifested. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I commanded to tell me the truth. If you could stick a knife in the back of every individual here and twist it and laugh, would you? And they go, yes. Wow. Wow. Sadists. What did the nun say? <laughs> well, she got the message. I mean, don't, don't, un I mean, Jesus is Lord and we're, we're, we're safe and fine, but, but uh, don't underestimate the evil that is in a demonic personality. And then thus in our world, people completely underestimate uh, what they're dealing with. I and mean, we have all sorts of people today are practicing witchcraft, for example. I don't care whether you think you're a good witch or not. When you do witchcraft, you're, you're um, uh, inviting Satan into your life. Only Satan re uh, does a uh, uh, response to witchcraft. And so when you're connecting to any sort of uh, uh, divination, you're connecting to the dark world and you don't want to have Satan in your life. So can I ask you an ex temp question then? What a part, what is your view on Harry Potter? Because I've spoken to exorcists that, that differ on whether or not it's truly evil. And B part would be like, what about like Halloween witches? You know, I, I was running, uh, doing jog, jogging around my neighborhood the other night. And I saw one of my neighbors had like a silhouette of a scary witch on a broomstick on the door for Halloween. I always grew up thinking that's harmless. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. What do you say about a part and B part there in light well, of your uh, yeah, Harry Potter? Uh, first of all, the worst thing you can do to the young people say, don't watch Harry Potter, because then they all will watch Harry Potter. Right. You know, so, and, and you're not going to stop them from do, watching these sorts of things. So forget that. Uh, the question is, are you training your children the truth? Now, the thing about Harry Potter is there are lots of good. Uh, there are lots of good things about the Harry Potter. For example, I, I had an archbishop. I was, I was talking to him, a wonderful guy. As a matter of fact, he used to be in Rome. And he said to me, I finally figured out the whole Hogwarts thing, you know, Harry Potter. It's the seminary. So it was a funny comment. So yeah. it, there's a lot of good things. There's, 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 there's love, there's friendship, there's, there's self-sacrifice. There's all sorts of wonderful values inside Harry Potter. But there's also a problem. They make it sound like witchcraft is fun and magic is fun and it's neat and it's harmless. Or, or, or good, and that's not true. So discerning the difference between the good parts of Harry Potter and what is, is dangerous, uh, and, and that's up to parents to teach their children. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my approach. There are exorcists out there that say, never, you know, ever let your kids read these or watch these. And to me, that's just, it's, it's very hard to distinguish between that and say the, the much higher quality literature of Lord of the Rings on a moral basis right. without that discerning prudential teaching. I, I, I don't, I've never thought it was a categorical thing. Father uh, uh, Riverger out there says the opposite. So I, it's just one of those things. How about like Halloween witches as we approach that time of the year? I Here's mean, what I would say about whole Halloween. First of all, Halloween is a very real uh, demonic event. Uh, it is the Eve, All Hallows Eve. It's the Eve of all saints. And one of the things that uh, Satan does is he takes the things of uh, the Lord and mocks them and twists them. For example, when uh, someone's possessed, it's not uncommon that he will burn an upside down cross on the person's arm. To sit, you know, upside down cross and is mocking the cross of Jesus and a sign of his, I, I claim this person, which is why during an exorcism, we, we claim the person for Christ our Savior by the sign of the true cross. So it's a real event. He's mocking the Feast of All Saints the next day. And uh, you, you, people say, well, you know, it is evil really rampant on Halloween? Well, that's been our experience. We, some, lots of uh, possessed people on Halloween are really go through a rough time, uh, a spiritually sensitive people, those who have special charisms uh, to discern the presence of evil or good uh, often get beat up on uh, Halloween. So, so what we do on Halloween, by the way, is we do a holy hour. You know, we, we pray, we try to pray in. This is a serious thing, the, the fight between good and evil in this world. Now, if you dress up your, your, your youngster as a, as a, you know, a, a little witch and they go around collecting candy, is that a problem? Well, I mean, I, I mean, it's not the best thing in the world. It's not the worst thing. But I would say this: one family I know, they their response is they uh, ask their 
sons and daughters to dress up as their favorite saint. So they'll go out on Halloween dressed as a saint. So I'd, that's a little bit better than dressing up as a witch or a demon. Yeah. How about, um, cause I mean, this is a, this always been a big thing. I raised my kids with it. Uh, the Eve of, uh, of feast day is also celebrated by the church. I think it was Pope, uh, one of the early Leos, the third or the fourth moved Al Hallows Eve from spring where it made little sense to the harvest uh, on October the 31st. So the date was shifted intentionally to, you know, match up with the calendar, the harvest, uh, late October time of the year. And there, I, I found some documents where they're saying, okay, like, look, you, you shouldn't be celebrating witches or evil, but the idea that the night as a, as a function of memento mori uh, reminds us the winter is coming, the deathly time of the year, and we're having a little bit of fun with it. I found some great Catholic sources on that that said, look, going around and collecting candy isn't Eve. I wasn't trying to make this a whole thing, but I was just like, this is what we do. And I'm, I'm, I no longer, you know, like, like the witch stuff now that I've learned in serious adulthood and serious Christian study that this actually has a, a, a most serious component at its core. But, you know, dressing up like a Pokemon or something like that and, get, and collecting candy, w w you agree, is not, is not a no uh, bad thing. But uh, the fact that witchcraft is a real thing, right now we're exercising uh, two or three individuals who have been cursed by witches, and they are really tormented. I mean, are lots they? of people. Yeah, it's unbelievable. As one guy said to me, he said, I never would have believed it, that, that this witch has uh, power uh, to do this. Of course, it's not the witch's power. She actually is uh, uh, Satan's, uh, it's Satan's power. And uh, the person is tormented. His family is tormented. He's suffering physically, mentally. Uh, there are all sorts of uh, the daughters. Of, uh, and all sorts of things are happening. The power goes out. Uh, the alarms go off. And then all sorts of wild things are happening in the house. And she says that when she'll send them a note and say, I'm, I'm cursing you. And, and so it's a real thing uh, that, that, but, but what they don't realize is that they're tapping into Satan's power and they're really, it's, they're minions of Satan, whether they know it or not. And uh, so it's, it's something serious. And there's so many young people who are self-proclaimed witches uh, that they really have no idea what they're getting themselves involved with. So why do we not uh, witness firsthand or at least secondhand more ubiquity because witchcraft has been on the ascendancy so aggressively? Why is because everyone wants to know, OK, so real some of these real witches, the ones that are deeply involved in the esoteric elements, yeah. you're saying can do these preternatural things, right. uh, you know, make the alarm go off in your house from across the country. Why isn't there more ubiquity there? I, I, I have other uh, priest friends who have been parts of exorcisms and they, they all say the same thing. I believe you guys all 100%. I'm a, I'm a mm -hmm. believing Roman Catholic. I'm just curious why with more witches, there's not more witchcraft happening to every opponent or every adversary of every witch out there. You know what I mean? Why well, more yeah. well, first thing is uh, Satan's power is limited. So if you're a practicing uh, Christian Catholic, you know, you're protected. Uh, Ephesians 6, you know, we, uh, that God protects us in the wiles of the devil. So uh, the, the witch hates me, the, both of them. And, and, I, and uh, they've, they've, you know, they've, they've tried, but it just bounces off me because the Lord protects me, which he has to. If he, if he didn't, every exorcist in the country would be dead. So, uh, right. So first of all, people are, are, who live a good life generally are protected against uh, some of the reason why these guys uh, have problems is they were involved with the witch. They, they had uh, sinful relationships with these witches and that mm -hmm. creates a vulnerability. Uh, and so the, the thing I tell people, they say, oh, my gosh, I'm so frightened by Satan and, and witches. I, Look, you live the faith. You practice the faith. God's going to protect you. But if you don't, you're taking away your shield, number one. And then you start committing serious sins. You create a vulnerability. And then, God forbid, you start doing these uh, occult behaviors like, you know, uh, seances and, and, and Charlie Charlie and tarot cards and all that kind of stuff. You know, you, you're basically uh, giving Satan an opening. And you do all those things. And then you, you're, you're going to have you eventually you'll have a problem. Yeah. People out there don't don't let your kids play 
Bloody Mary or Charlie Charlie or any of these games. They sound they sound trivial in youth. I think I I did Bloody Mary once, not knowing it's some massive slumber party, and I just I hadn't been taught. This is absolutely real. So you're saying, Father, that that if a guy dates a witch, even you know from a non participatory point of view, if he engages in sinful sexual relations with her, even if he's not joining seances that he could wind up instead of being after he dumps or say spammed by her you're, you're telling me he could get text spammed by a demon later from what you told me earlier or, right? or if you have a uh, an intense uh sinful relationship with anyone practicing the occult does the person's there's a bond there and uh, a bad bond and the person's evil can indeed uh, uh, affect you uh we got again some of the people are praying over now they are in unintentionally they they were cursed by by these these witches and uh they were throw they were throwing up uh what we call a bolus they were throwing up this uh, stuff this black uh stuff uh that's throwing up the, as we pray over the up that that was the part of the curse uh so what's it called sorry oh the what's bolus a b-o-l-u-s a bolus it that a matter of fact, one of them was in a, a, a medical facility and, and she coughed up this bolus and the doctors had no idea what it was. They said there was this black, dark, boiling fluid that was sort of undulating and whatever. So uh, it's a very real thing. Or, or even if the witch thinks she's doing good things, or by the way, they, there can be men who say they're witches too, by the way, not just females. But hey, in 2021. Right. We had one woman uh, come to us. She had some uh, spiritual problems. So she went to see a local witch and the witch was trying to, okay, fine. I'll do some healing over you. So she did her uh, healing uh, rituals thinking she was doing some good stuff. And the person's problems got 10 times worse. Uh, I just then at literally all hell broke loose in her life. So even if they intend to do good, you were involving a witch in uh, someone doing occult stuff in your life and you're opening yourself up to, too bad stuff. This is fascinating, Father. This is um, Monsignor Stephen Rossetti joining us on Rules for Retrogrades. I want to remind you guys out there to like, subscribe, get notifications, leave a comment. Um, if you have questions, we'll take some at the end for Monsignor. Also, I would remind you all to go out and get uh, the book, by Monsignor Rossetti. It came out this summer on Sophia Institute Press, Diary of an American Exorcist. Also on Sophia Institute Press, my book just came out earlier this week, The Case for Patriarchy. You know all about that because I've been talking about that. Also, if you're interested in you know getting the special benefits, which are amping up in late 2021 and 2022, go to Timothy J. Gordon on Patreon. I'd like to thank all the loyal patrons monsignor you mentioned earlier in the show that sometimes pictures will fly off the walls is it done in um um do they just fall off do they fly off? these are the the questions people ask me yeah. behind the scenes yeah it could be I either it like happens that. both sometimes it just fall sometimes they fly off sometimes things just break they'll just smash whatever or there's a strange phenomenon you know so uh could be any of those things basically what the demons can do anything the Lord allows them to do so they can manipulate the, the material world. Uh, right. So, yeah. But it's just, uh, we just say it's just demonic antics and people get all upset. They all get frightened. I say, look, if the picture flies off the wall, put it back. And they get all upset about these sorts of things. They're, they're like a bunch of adolescents, or adolescent gang members. You know, they're just, uh, uh, it's, they're just trying to frighten you. That's all. They're just empty. Yeah. It's, it's got to be frightening, though. I, I mean, like, I look, you guys are a brave subset of Warriors for Christ, exorcists. You really, really are. And I, I, I commend you. It's it's very. I don't know. It's just super admirable. I, I probably don't have to articulate this to my audience. They all feel the same way. But it's genuinely scary stuff. I was always. I was never afraid of any man, right? I, I, but, but, I, but demons, this is terrifying. And all the exorcists I've ever had the honor of speaking to have, with all these reports of you're getting texts from demons, you're having pictures flung off walls. 
And you always say, look, you know, in the end, good wins. And that makes me scared. Have you ever been actually scared for your, your personal safety? Uh, the, the biggest uh, challenge I had physically was I was uh, in the midst of the big, toughest case we ever had. It was just a huge case. And uh, it was uh, it's been done, thank God. But uh, she's been delivered. But it was a huge case. Uh, the demons present looked like a who's who in hell. I mean, it was, it was, you know, they were all there. Uh, and I was walking down the stairs in the middle of the night, about three. It's stupid. I, I, I should have thought twice about it. It was three in the morning. The, 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 I don't know why I was up, but I was going downstairs to get a drink of water. And that's a demonic hour, you know, the three in the morning. There's a mockery of Jesus's resurrection or the crucifixion on the, at three o'clock. And, uh, and I was going down the stairs and my feet flew out from underneath me. And then I was like vertical, you know, I was, I went, Whoa. so I, I lunged over and grabbed, grabbed the banister, you know, good air, my good air force training. I just right. lunged, grabbed and grabbed the banister. It cut my arm pretty bad, but uh, had I not uh, responded quickly, I could have hurt myself pretty badly. Uh, and so in terms of ascertainment, I, I'm sorry to get stuck on this, but this is the main question I get out there or is from, from people that are like, and this just isn't my, you know, I'm a, I'm a Thomistic philosopher and a constitutional uh, scholar. So I, I don't know. I, even, even though I, I also teach church history and things like that, I just can't answer. So maybe you can answer for people here today. How does one ascertain the difference between natural and preternatural? I mean, we've all slipped before, but you, a, a, a very wise man trained in, in lots of different things, have the common sense to tell the difference. You know, how do you ascertain where those texts ultimately came from? Were they a prank? No, clearly not. How does one ascertain? The church has always been very insistent on ascertaining the difference between the natural and the preternatural. How did you know you didn't just slip that night? Well, uh, how did I know it was slipped? Uh, because I was, it was physically impossible. I mean, I was just walking down the stairs. I was walking rapidly, but... But uh, wasn't that bad fast? But what my feet were like, I mean, it was like that. No, no, that, that was not a slip. That was, you know, that was. So that's how I would say when we look at the preternatural, it's beyond what is natural. For example, we had someone who, you know, when they weigh, when they weighs probably ninety pounds, and uh, she was uh, manifesting on the floor, uh, we couldn't move her. You know, she it was like it was like she was ripping to the floor, and so uh, it, the, the demons are holding her down, uh, and uh, it uh, the that's happened before to other uh, Saint Gemma Galgani, for example. She was held down by demons once; they couldn't move her. She weighed probably like ninety pounds; they couldn't move her. Wow! Uh, so, so things happen occasionally that just you just can't explain. For example, occult knowledge—that's a strong sign someone's possessed and and we've had some cases of that where doing the uh, uh, discernment initial discernment that person will know things about you or other priests or whatever that there's just no way they could have known that no one knew right. that and right. uh, you say okay where did they get that they got that from the demons uh right. of course the, the one of the most common well we've had uh, we haven't had seen this but when people start to levitate another two a couple of the teams have said they've had people levitate We've had two people said they did, but they weren't in the room at the time. Right. Uh, right. You've never it, seen a levitation. No, no. And uh, I'm sure I will, though, at some point, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, it's I uh, these well. sorts of things happen, you know, that physical things happen that you can't explain. Uh, for example, uh, a few months ago, someone coughed up uh, a bolt, about a two and two and a half inch bolt and in, in washer uh, as part of her liberation. Well, wow. That wasn't in her stomach. It was in the demons materialized in her mouth. It was part of her liberation. Why? Because it's a long story, but basically she was had been cursed and involved with someone in the occult who also did maintenance projects with them. And so this there was a, there was a tie there around uh, bolts and and uh, washers. So I've got I've got it right behind me. I've got that bolt right right behind me. And there's there's no way that 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 was in her stomach. I mean. Can we see yeah. that bolt? Is it is it visible in the screen? Yeah, wait a second. I'll be, I'll, 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 let me go get it. Yeah, that that's that's material evidence, as the uh, attorneys will call it. Yeah. Nope, nope. That is creepy stuff. Yeah, that, that, I, I got it. 
Here we go. I mean, I I, I asked them to I got it from them. You know, there it is. Let's see. You know, it, it was, yeah. Now that didn't. Oh, I see, Father Fa Monsignor, your uh, your camera went off there. That was interesting. Uh, could no. you could you hold it up one more time? That's it, almost. That's you, that's. Can you see it? Yeah. Now I can. Now I can. That was weird. That's crazy. Yeah, you you went black. I, the screen blacked out when you were trying I to show. I turned it off. I turned. That was me. Oh, okay. 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 I was like, oh, is this, how do we ascertain? Is this natural or preternatural? Well, well as a matter of fact, uh, it is not uncommon the demons will mess with technology. For example, I had a priest call me on a tough case. He called me. Now I just, my phone was working fine. He called me, phone drop, called me, phone drop. We did this about eight or 10 times and his connection was good. My connection was good. So finally I said a little prayer to say Michael, and then the phone went through fine. Demons often mess with technology, especially when a possessed person is trying to call me. So we actually have a prayer on our app uh, for protecting one's technology. Wow. And, and uh, by the way, we have a bunch of uh, good deliverance prayers for people on our app. We have an app called Catholic Exorcism. So it's free, Catholic Exorcism. You get a lot of these good deliverance prayers. One of them is a prayer for uh, technology and uh, protecting that because the demons mess with it all the time. The app is called Catholic Exorcism, Monsignor. Yes. yes. Um, awesome. That's that's a good resource, even for people that just want to protect their family and have have prayed Saint Michael, one of the best, no probably the best known uh, anti anti oh, yeah. Well, there's a, there's a whole section. The most popular section on the app is a deliverance prayers for the laity. So uh, go on to the app Catholic Exorcism, and you can find lots of good deliverance prayers. You can use. Settle a bet, Monsignor, if you will. Is there a disparity in efficacy between English and Latin deliverance prayers? This becomes a kind of liturgical debate. It's got implications. Yeah, no, it's a big fight. And uh, there's lots of these sort of esoteric questions, you know. <laughs> so, although, <laughs> frankly, uh, uh, all the extras I know are pray in Latin. It's, the Latin's not that hard, you know. No, no, no. And, uh, it's just not that hard. So, uh, we pray in Latin, and the demons do seem to respond to the ancient language uh, more. Although, okay. although uh, I've got one of our guys in our team, he started to use the new rite in English, and it's been very effective. So the, the key is not so much which language, but if the church's authority and power behind it, it'll be effective. Uh, so that's the key. And so the rite uh, in English is effective. Uh, but nonetheless, most of the guys prefer the Latin, and uh, I certainly say it in Latin myself. Well, this is a Latin mass going audience, uh, yeah. very preponderantly, you know, 75%, maybe 80% of the retrogrades and parish orphans out there are Latin mass people. So they like to hear you saying that, and I, I'm, a, I'm a Latin mass going Catholic myself. So I, 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 was, just, I was just curious if you note as a um, bizarrely unique way to evidence all of these liturgical debates happening out there you can actually say look it's not scientific but there seems to be some you know evidence that i've observed that yes latin seems to be um the most efficacious uh, you're not committing yourself to that but it's something i would be on the watch for if i were well we we uh we prefer to pray in latin uh, again uh, uh whether it's more effective i don't know but certainly the exorcist do use a Latin, right? Monsignor, could I um, pepper you with some of the questions on behalf of these sure. retrogrades in the audience? Sure. Okay, here's one. Uh, Monsignor, uh, my grandfather, this is by Falafis, was a 32nd degree Freemason. Someone told me about generational curses they put on their descendants. Should I be worried? What do I do? Here's what I do. Go to our app, Catholic Exorcism. There's a whole prayer for renouncing the curses of Freemasonry. I strongly urge you to do it at least two or three times. And uh, yes, there are. We, that's been our a strong experience that when people have Freemasonry in their fairly immediate family, uh, it can have a, a long-term negative impact on the family and the generational line. So that's been our experience. There's a good prayer for it. And uh, go ahead and use that prayer. And of course, remember that Jesus breaks and lifts 
all curses by the power of his death and resurrection. A follow up on that would come from yours truly, Monsignor. There, I'm friends with David Gray, who was a reformed ex Mason himself, Catholic guy, general, all around good guy. I've been on his show a few times. He's been on my show. He says that that the Masons, even the low level ones, are being prepped for as they go higher and higher um, in the order outright esotericism right um is this is this your experience with with masonry it's basically just es esoteric knowledge as they get higher and higher and it becomes outright satanism well uh that is certainly the conjecture the church has been very clear about condemning and the yeah. and the condemnation is still in place do not belong to uh, uh masonry or any related organization there are right. several related organizations um uh, Lions Club and things like that. Yeah, as, stay away. Uh, so as it goes up, uh, it gets more and more. Yes, it gets more and more, uh, frankly, wacky and more and more uh, cultish. Uh, and so uh, is it in the end, does it really become a satanic worship? Mm, some say yes, some say no, but I it's not good. And I would say there's a lot of occult stuff in there and uh, stay away from it. And if you've got some, by the way, if you got a bunch of free Masonic uh, relics in your house, like the swords and all that sort of stuff, burn them, get rid of them, get rid of all that paraphernalia and say that Freemasonry prayer and call on Jesus to heal you and your generational line. Here's a question. I've asked this to a couple exorcists I've interviewed in the past. This comes from CJP. Can demons read our minds? Do they know our specific sins that we've committed? Uh, they cannot read your mind. It's very clear. They don't know the future. They cannot do miracles and they can't read your mind. But the demons are great psychologists. They've been around forever and they are very intuitive. So they have an idea what you're thinking, you know, and because they're just such good psychologists. And number one and number two, uh, they know they know a lot of your sins because they watch you do it. So the, the fact is, is in, in an exorcism, will they repeat our sins sometimes? Yes. It doesn't happen very often. But one session, for example, the demons went around and said, you didn't go to confession today. You didn't go to confession today. You didn't go to confession today. And I said, close your mouth in Jesus' name. Or they'll stand up and they'll say, I'm going, now I'm going to tell you about all the evil sins your community is, is uh, uh, your, your religious order is, is doing. And I stand, I make them close their mouths. So, uh, yeah, they know because they were there watching you do it. Wow. And have you, do you hear the, um, that, uh, what I also meant to ask, I ask every exorcist, this is again from yours truly, the uh, different languages, ancient languages spoken by young, young children, backwards or whatever, Hebrew, Latin, Greek things they've never learned to speak. Have you ever experienced yeah. that? Once no question about it. Yeah. That's a common sign of possession that the people will speak in foreign language or they'll write. We had a person just recently write in an Eastern European language. There's a long, long reason why she did that. She didn't know the language she wrote. And, and, and so we took the, the, the message and gave it to someone who knew that, that language. And it was just a bunch of snarky demonic comments. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they, they, that's sometimes why I'll pray in Latin or, uh, Italian and uh, see if the person knows what I'm saying. Uh, if they do that again, uh, that's a cult knowledge. Interesting. And often they do know what you're saying when yeah. you speak I mean, a, a real possessed person would, would have some occult knowledge and it doesn't come out in the beginning, but if you're, you're praying over them for six or eight months or a year or so sooner or later, you'll probably get some occult knowledge uh, from them. Interesting. What, um, so I think this is uh, Kiara missed the beginning portion of the interview where I'd asked you what's your take on Harry Potter. Uh, would you mind just repeating for Kiara? It's a, it's a hot issue, uh, bizarrely enough. Well, all that stuff, not just Harry Potter, but all that sort of stuff. Again, as I say, uh, there are, when you watch these movies, I've watched the Harry Potter series. Uh, there are lots of good values in there. You know, their friendship and love and sacrifice and all those sorts of things, family. Uh, so there's a lot of good values in there, but the, the bad values you have to be careful of. And that is glorifying magic and not uh, uh, having a real sense of what the evil is involved with that witchcraft and magic. So you're not going to stop your kids from watching these uh, movies and, and reading the books. You just, it's not going to happen. You're going to watch them. 
But so you need to be catechized. You need to be able to discern what's good and what's not good. And that's true of life in general. Uh, they're going to come up with, against all sorts of stuff in, in their lives. They need to discern what is of God and what is of the, of the devil. So they need to be taught. Yeah, I think a certain, I, I, I agree with you there. Uh, it is my approach with my six kids, but I think a certain portion of my audience, maybe a smaller portion, will treat it like you just said. Well, you're not going to be able to keep your kids from reading Sir Albert Pike and, you know, the the worst books of esotericism. It's like clearly Monsignor is saying, if I can translate for you here, they're not so bad that it becomes a categorical evil. I mean, you, you can quibble at what exact level, you know, the magic is a little bit different from the magic that's happening in, you know, from Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. They're not as good at books, not as good at movies either. But clearly, if it were a categorical evil, you would tell people what you told them about Freemasonry. Stay away categorically. Right. For example, if you if you watch the Harry Potter movies, you're not going to get possessed. You know, right. that, that's not going to happen. Right. Uh, but you got to be careful. Uh, for example, there's I understand there's a school system out west that's fighting about having the kids perform some sort of worshiping of, de- of uh, pagan deities. And they're not just studying about it. They're actually yeah. engaged in the ritual. So if, if someone said to me, if my child wants to engage in these magic rituals from Harry Potter, is that okay? And the answer is no, it's not okay. Right. right. You know, you start doing rituals and say, well, we just thought it was just some sort of fun thing. No, words have, have power and meaning. And right. one, one person got possessed, she uh, was uh, worshiping pagan deities. He said, well, I meant it in terms of love and peace and joy. I said, yeah, but you were worshiping pagan deities. And whether you intended it or not, evil things happened. What about, Father, generational curses? I forget whose question this is. Uh, not just generational curses, but um, the lays, the laity's uh, response. Can, can you protect yourself with the rosary? Can you protect yourself with the sacraments? Or if you find out, on the other hand, you've been cursed by, by a witch or something from across the country, should you seek out a a knowledgeable priest as soon as possible? Well, they asked several questions. Let's start with the generational curses. Some priests don't don't believe the generational curse thing. They say, well, you're only responsible for your own sins. That's true. So you're not responsible for the sins of generations before you. But could that negatively affect you, the the effects of it? Sure could. For example, if your, God forbid, your father would sexually abuse you, uh, you're not responsible for that sin, but you're going to you're going to suffer from the, re, the the bad results of it. So that's what happens. The, the, the evil gets passed down. Now, obviously, the more proximate it is, the more uh, effect it's going to have on you, probably. Certainly. But remember that just we get Jesus as Lord. So Jesus heals. There's some several prayers to lift generational curses and sins in our app uh, for the lady. Go ahead and, and, and use them. Um, What's that app again, Monsignor? Uh, Catholic Exorcism. Uh, Catholic uh, Space Exorcism, and uh, it's free. Uh, so Cynthia wants me to ask you about the Ouija board. That's, that's a definite no-no, right? That's a category. Well, as a matter of fact, that famous movie, The Exorcist, was a real case uh, based on a 12-year-old boy. Boy, yeah. And yeah. by the way, you can, you can get the book that's got, uh, got the uh, notes from The Exorcist on it. It was fascinating. It's a great read for me as an exorcist. Uh, but uh, the kid was using a Ouija board. Now, people, I had one, one mother lambaste me not too long ago. Say, ah, you're just, you're just a fear monger. There's nothing wrong with playing with Ouija boards. I'm sorry, there is. It's called divination. And when you start trying to uh, divine things which you have no business doing, where, where does the knowledge come from? This, I would, one guy interviewed me, he was doing astral projection. Well, well, where does that come from? It, it, it's, it's, it's demonic. God's not doing this uh, astral projection. It's the Satanist. Right. Yeah, people, if you have Ouija boards in your house or your, your kid's friend's house, tarot cards, any of this stuff, burn it. Burn Get it. Rid of it. This is, Get rid of it. Monsignor, I've really enjoyed talking to you. I like your approach to these things. You're saying, look, there are categorical evils, no-nos. Most people in my audience already know what they are. Some don't. Um, and then there are, there are, you know, like life, there are domains of prudence. And some things are automatically off limits. Others are not. 
I think this has been incredibly helpful. I want you people to, what would be incredibly helpful for Monsignor Rossetti is if you run out to Sophia Institute Press and purchase his book, you can also get it on Amazon. It is called The Diary of an American Exorcist, Monsignor Stephen Rossetti. Also get my book, The Case for Patriarchy. If you want to support this show, do it on Patreon, timothyjgordon.com. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Monsignor, would you bring us out with a blessing for, for, for the audience and for our families? Let's pray. Uh, let's pray that Our Lady, Our Lady the Rosary, uh, would spread her mantle over us this day and always, protecting us from any evil influence. May the blood of Jesus wash over us all, cleanse us, purify us, sanctify us, raise us up to holiness and life. And may Almighty God bless you all and your loved ones, keep you safe, keep you holy. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Monsignor. This has been a, a dynamite 45 minutes, and I hope you'll come back on Rules for Retrograde sometime soon. I'm glad to do it, Tim. God bless you and all your listeners. God bless, Father. Thanks a million. People out there, stay tough. Burn all your bad objects. You probably don't even have them. Burn any Freemasonic stuff, tarot cards, Ouija boards. These are not to be trifled with. Deus Volt, God bless you all.